water levels at Yonki Dam drop. Low water levels in Madang due to El Nino. And leaders describe PNG's constitution 40 years on. This is National MTV News with Tokana Hasavi. A very good evening and welcome to Friday's News. It's good to have your company. Effects of the drought in Medang province has seen people, mostly those who don't have water supplies, walking long distances in search for water. Others are resorting to moving in with their relatives or friends who own water supplies, but they have to pay for the water bills. Like most provinces, Medang is becoming drier and dustier with the drought. Back in the villages, especially for those within the town areas, like the Sagalao or Miss village, the water wells and rivers are drying up fast and the search for water has begun. Dry season now, waras mipa sa yusim long and em dati na dust pull up long and so mipa no ga road logo so mipa sa yusim same wara long laundry na wash wash washim all pot pellet 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 long and mipa sa kam sim wara lo school na school ya em sevi mipa sa galaw school. The people have resorted to getting water from those who own water supplies, and that has a price to it. Planti tumas wak la kam so. Me toki more lo lo halbi lo buy ma water bill by inap me aski more lo putim sampla coins. Kaino sa example lo ten na twenty liters lo container em one kina me me tok sa walong lo putim one kina. Food gardens are also drying up, so for most villages, planting yams are a must to survive the severity of this drought. Rachel Shise, National MTV News, Medang. Well, charity organization Hospital Paramount Foundation officially handed over life-saving medical equipment to Popandeta General Hospital today. The health equipment includes an Omron Digital BP monitor, radar 5 portable oximeter, 25 beds, electrocardiograph, suction pump and a microscope. The equipment costs over 45,000 kina and was paid for by Hospital Poromant Foundation through charity fundraisers. Popandeta General CEO Dr. Ganzi Gawin says the equipment is timely to serve the province. Dr. Gawin says the life-saving medical equipment will see many lives saved and also adds on to the current strength of health facilities. Well, with less than four weeks to Independence Day, that's on September 16, three PNG statesmen and a woman have described the constitution of PNG as a pillar of strength for the country. The three were interviewed by MTV for a 40th Independence Anniversary special in their capacity as politicians and for one of them as a member of the Constitutional Planning Committee. They say the strength of our constitution lies in the fact that it was homegrown. MTV Sarah Alpong has more on this report. It's the Constitution. Sir John Caputin was one of the 15 people who were given the task of putting together PNG's constitution. Some 400 meetings throughout the country. He spoke with pride about a document that was produced by Papua New Guineans that was set to guide the progress of a new nation. I think it's unique in that sense. It was not written for us by Australia or like in Africa constitution were written in London and so forth. No. The strength of this constitution has been tested on various occasions as PNG struggles with the challenges of developing into a modern society. One of those times was during the Sandline crisis which occurred during the height of the Bougainville conflict. It was 1997. The fighting on Bougainville was into its 10th year. Sir Julius Chen was Prime Minister then. His government's decision to hire mercenaries to assist the PNGDF in this conflict created a controversy. Sir Julius said he made a decision as the CEO of PNG and he faced the consequences of that decision. Sandline was something that I think the authority of the government, the constitution prevailed. The sovereignty of the uh, constitution prevailed. I did not shirk from my responsibility. 
I welcomed it. I stood by it. There was a vote of no confidence. 14 years later, the constitution would once again be put to the test on another political matter. Dame Carol Kidu was part of the government at the time of the 2011 political impasse. I think I was screaming on the floor is respect our constitution. I didn't necessarily think that I was part of a brilliant government. All governments have good and bad, but I was saying respect the constitution. The constitution is what holds us together. Dame Carol says we have a lot to celebrate on this 40th independence anniversary, and the constitution is one of those things that should be celebrated. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Well, National MTV News continues with more local stories. That's coming up after this break. Stay with us. Thanks for your company and welcome back to National MTV News. A four-lane highway that will run through the middle of homes at the Tassion Barracks in Port Moresby's Gerihu suburb has residents worried. 67 police officers and inspectors will have their homes relocated as they are in the way of the new four-lane highway, one of the initiatives of the government to ease traffic congestion in the city. Members of the Tassion Barracks community spoke to MTV News about their concerns. We apologize for not bringing you that report. Apparently, we seem to be experiencing technical issues again, but we'll bring it to you when it's rectified. Moving on, Momase Police Boss Chief Superintendent Nema Mondiai is pleased with the progress of the West Sipic Regional by-election. Mondiai, who is also Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police for Momase, is in Vanimore to oversee the counting. He also says polling was completed without any security issues, with the exception of delays due to bad weather. ACP Mondiai says generally Vanimore is quiet and while the counting is going on at the Vanimore Town Market building, businesses, business is as usual for the residents of Vanimore and the people of Sundown Province. Police officers were beefed up by their sister discipline forces from CIS and the soldiers. Meanwhile, out of these 16 candidates, 11 have been excluded, including former Sundown Governor Carlos Uni. He was the 10th exclusion on Wednesday afternoon. Apologies, I will take you back to the earlier story in which we experienced technical issues. A four-lane four highway that will run through the middle of homes at the Tassion Barracks here in Port Moresby, Scarrow, whose suburb has residents worried. 67 police officers and inspectors will have their homes relocated as they are in the way of the new four-lane highway, one of the initiatives of the government to ease traffic congestion in the city. Members of the Tassion Barracks community spoke to MTV News about their concerns. Family of police officers and inspectors were caught off guard this morning when an excavator owned by engineering company China Harbour Engineering bulldozed its way through the backyards of families' homes. We would have thought that they would have informed us so that we'll be able to assist them work together on this thing. We have nothing against them, de development projects and so on. It's just that they must consult us so that we can be able to assist and work together to make sure that we do it properly and quickly. Residents are complaining that the planning and consultation process of the four-way lane will only bring harm to families of police officers who reside there due to how the planning of the road will relocate them. This plane here is five to six meters long. What contractors plan to do is to bring in kit homes and build them right here next to a drain that caters for rainbow and baronies waste. Can you build a house, police houses, policemen and children living next to a storm drain about two, three meters away on the right? And on the left is this uh, waste from all the houses coming down here. And it, you're going to build a house here. That's why we are complaining because it is totally unsafe. Turi explained that in the original plan that was presented last year in August, they were to relocate houses on the other side of the floodwater drain. 
He said the incident of the excavator escorted by police mobile unit would be made known to the Commissioner Gary Baki, who had already advised the engineering company not to continue until houses were relocated. The Commissioner had already told them not to do any work and he left for, he left for a New Year for police conference. And he's coming tomorrow. He'll be very displeased with the way the police officers came today and bulldozed three houses, uh, flower gardens, and uh, I think some cars damaged. Gerahu to Nine Mile cost 122 million kina. This four lane, eight kilometers will be constructed by China Harbor Engineering Company, PNG Limited. Adelaide Sirox Kari, National MTV News. We'll bring you more stories making headlines in the country after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Two months of dry weather has caused a five metre drop in the water level at a dam that supplies power to a third of the country. While the water level at the Yonki Dam in the Eastern Highlands is within safe limits, Prolonged dry weather could force PNG Power to start a nationwide power rationing process. MTV's Scott Wider reports. Over the last two months, Yonki Dam has used more water than it has received. Along the banks of the dam is evidence of the impact of this dry spill. Ruben Muru, the power station's manager, says things can only get worse if the rains don't come within three months. There's only two months gone, two and a half months. And if we continue uh, in the trend, we will definitely face problems. The water level has dropped five meters. At present, Yonki's water level is within the safe range. Power generation will continue unhindered for now. This dam is central in power generation for five highlands provinces and Medang and Leh. Now, if this dry spell continues for another six months, it will result in power rationing and significant costs in terms of fuel for PNG Power. Fuel cost will be the main main cost here, especially the, for the, the gas turbine, 25 megawatt gas turbine in Leh. That will be drinking up more fuel than, uh, than we would expect. This facility is in the heart of Yonki's power generation. This building sits on a structure that goes 300 meters underground where large turbines are located. It has the ability to produce 70 megawatts of electricity, but it all depends on the amount of water held at this dam. While the country focuses on the more obvious impacts of the drought, the shutdown of Yonki in the event that the drought continues for another six months will pose significant costs, not just to PNG power, but to the whole of the PNG economy. Scott Wade, National MTV News, Lay. India has shown interest in investing into Papua New Guinea's petroleum and energy sector. India's largest international oil and gas company, Ongsi Videsh Limited, made their interests known during an interaction with the PNG delegation led by Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. Mr O'Neill said PNG needs to encourage this strategic partnership with India. Following the interaction, a delegation from India is expected to visit PNG to seek out opportunities for investment. MTV's Delhi Waigeno reports from New Delhi. It was a high-profile interactive meeting with key cabinet ministers led by Prime Minister O'Neill. India's largest international petroleum and energy company, oil and natural gas company, or ONGC Vidash Limited, said they were seeking collaboration with the sector in PNG. Mr. O'Neill welcomed their interest, saying that PNG has the unique ability to deliver LNG at the right price. He said that India was an ideal partner, being the fourth biggest economy in the world, with a population of over 1.2 billion people and a relatively high need for energy to sustain this growth. Its economy has been growing at about uh, 7 to 8 percent per annum, uh, which is a big growth in anybody's language. And to maintain that level of growth, uh, the Indian uh, government and of course the people need energy. And Papua New Guinea is in a unique position. Because of our lo location, we are very close to India and the Asian markets. And as a result of that, we are able to supply uh, LNG and oil products to markets like India and many other others in the region much cheaper than many of our competitors uh, in this sector. 
Because of these factors, the Prime Minister said PNG is encouraging the Indian government and its state-owned entities, especially the oil and gas companies, to invest in PNG. A memorandum of understanding was previously signed between both countries, however it was not enforced. But Mr O'Neill is satisfied with the discussions held yesterday with business leaders from the oil and gas sector in India. We had uh, very good discussions with uh, the business leaders in the oil and gas sector and uh, they are quite happy to uh, come and uh, continue to work to uh, in the implementation of that MOU. Our government is committed to that MOU. We will, we will make sure that uh, we enter the Indian uh, LNG market especially by making sure that we secure this market for our gas that we are going to uh, produce in the uh, second LNG project that is coming up. Narendra Verma, Managing Director of ONGC Vidash Limited, was content with PNG's willingness to cooperate. We are very much pleased with the Prime Minister's visit here. And we look forward this, to this opportunity to recapitalize the whole thing and uh, start with a new acceleration. We look forward to have a very active uh, participation. Reporting from India, Delhi Waigeno, National, MTV News. Many delicate aspects contribute to the quality and excellence of coffee. Next Monday, PNG's Coffee Industry Corporation will begin its coffee cupping competition to identify the country's finest coffee among its small coffee growers. The number of participants has, has increased to 75 from last year when 69 samples were put forward. MTV's Alana Lay with this report. Factors contributing to high quality coffee include rich soil, high altitudes and proximity to the equator. The Coffee Industry Corporation this year narrowed down selections from 101 prospective coffee growers. Morabe, once again, is in the lead with 27 groups. Deputy Opposition Leader Sam Basil is optimistic that his district could be a leading force behind the nation's coffee exports following a recent impressive boost in production. The competition will feature last year's winner, Jonah Anago, from Okapa District in the Eastern Highlands. The Coffee Industry Corporation has since assisted Anago's Kanait Kirapim Association to refine and sell his product in order to eventually reach PNG's coffee export standards, renowned for its quality worldwide. The competition begins under strict closed-door measures next Monday for a week, before it will then be open to the general public for three days, wrapping up on the 4th of September at the Holiday Inn Hotel. Alana Lay, National MTV News. And now we check out the finance news. The Kina closed unchanged at 0.3595 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, our Kina was buying 0.3520 US dollars, 0.4772 Australian dollars, 0.3097 Euro, and 43.05 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold and cocoa closed the day higher, while coffee and copper closed lower. Palm oil closed the day lower, while crude oil and copper closed the day higher. And finally, on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 33 points lower, the ASX closed at 32 points lower, and the All Ordinaries closed at 85 points lower as well. You're watching National MTV News tonight. Stay tuned, we'll bring you True Guy Sports along with all its sporting action. Tukai Sports. Right. 
Welcome to Trukai Sports in Rugby Union. Team Tahiti is the last contingent to complement the teams competing in this year's Oceania Cup. While the Solomon Islands and American Samoa are banking on their forward pack to drive their game plan, the Tahitians are aiming to use their back line in the tournament. Tahiti will face home favourites, the Pukpuks, in their first match tomorrow. While most of the teams competing in this year's cup have said to be utilizing their forward pack to drive their game plans, the Tahitians are keeping their game plans close to their hearts. Because there's a problem, you don't have enough competition, international competition in Tahiti because the, the travel is very expensive. So most of the games, they only have um, experience in local experience. So they don't have uh, international experience, except the Team 7 who come for the South Pacific game. With a pool of over 29 French-based players, six have been released to join the Tahitian team for the tournament. They have called a number of their players from the 2013 lineup and a handful of the seventh team that participated in the recent Pacific Games, adding experience to the side in their campaign. Yeah, we have some, we have a lot, uh, some of the, uh, our boys. We, uh, we play in France now because we send it when they are 18. To, to go to a play in France to have a, a best experience with a bigger championship. And so we, we bring six of them. Because the problem now, the, the training and the friendly game in France have started and the guys are, are preparing the season and it's very difficult for the club to, to release the player. So we just organize for six of them. Their participation also sets a platform for the growth of rugby union in the French Polynesian territory. I, um, we try, we try, but now the, I think that in, in, two years ago the team were not uh, waiting for us. <laughs> they, have, they, have, they have a idea of the Tahiti, a very small union, and so they were surprised, but now they, they are not surprised. They, not, they, they know we are working hard and try to get better and better, but we know the long, the, it's a long way, but we are working for. I'm Skola Sengi, National MTV Sports. The government has responded to a desperate plea for support from the PNG Rugby Football Union to host the 2015 Oceania Cup. Sports Minister Justin Chichenko said it was only right that government stepped in to, to assist as this is an international sporting event that should run without any hiccup. And rugby union is an up-and-coming sport in Papua New Guinea. It is a sport that has got a big future. A lot of our Papua New Guineans are playing this sport, not only men but also women, and are doing very, very well. And um, we can't allow we can't allow our international guests um, not to be looked after properly and correctly as they rightfully deserve. And um, it's very important that the government here steps in to ensure that uh, these, uh, this uh, competition runs smoothly and properly and for the benefit of Papua New Guinea as well as the benefit uh, for the actual rugby union as a whole. So the shortfalls were accommodation and also um, televising, telecasting. Papua New Guinean born Will Genia has been reintroduced to the Wallaby squad after a month off due to injury. His selection into the squad comes after the halves. Combination of Nick White and Matt Tumua proved to be a recipe for disaster. This will be Genia's last appearance in the Wallabies jersey as he hopes to end his Australian rugby career on a high. Quaid Cooper, Kirtley Beale and Matt Gitto have been confirmed in the backs while forwards James Slipper, Rob Simmons and Henry Spate have been selected in the forward pack ahead of James Horwell. Well, plans have been put in place for the development of boxing in Papua New Guinea. This will kick off with the Boxing National Championship set for November. The venue for the tournament is yet to be confirmed. This according to PNG Boxing President John Avira. The successful Pacific Games campaign, the Boxing Federation would like to reach out to the districts and discover more boxing talent. After the uh, successful uh, Pacific Games, uh, like all the other sports, you know, we'd like to reach to, to the districts. Uh, you know, we, uh, our executive has always uh, uh, promote uh, or try to bring uh, national championship to the districts. We believe that uh, that's where the you know, back of our talents are. We identify them there and develop them into elite boxers. The Federation has plans in place 
to kickstart some new programs, but the programs will be carried out after the national championships. In some programs, uh, we, we, we've got some plans to run competitions, but we would like to go to the national uh, uh, championship where the AGM will, and then get the new executives in and uh, you know, start rolling out the programs. Boxing coordinator Dick Larry urged the different associations to pay their affiliation fees because after the national championships, coaching clinics and other programs will be rolled out in the different associations around the country. Nothing, I just want to advise the uh, associations to fill, uh, pay their affiliation fees. Uh, straight after the national championship, we'll be looking at uh, coaching, refereeing courses and coaching courses to other provinces. And to, so that we can be able to develop them. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. Well, Trukai Sports continues after the break with sporting action on Rugby League. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Good to have you back with Trukai Sports and in Rugby League, Snacks, Tigers and Mendy Murks, chances of finals appearance now hang on the line in this Sunday's qualifying semi-final of the Intercity Cup. Both teams suffered a narrow defeat to Agma Gurus and Simu Lions last weekend. Minor Premier Snacks, Tigers have suffered only four losses during the season, will now meet Mendy Murks in Leigh in the, in the first semi-final qualifier. Hagen Eagles will travel down to Mendy to go head-to-head -head against defending cup champions Hella Wigman. The winner of these matches will, will head into the semi-finals to meet the Agmark Gurriers and Simu Lions next weekend. The Sir John Guy Stadium will host the first ever Melanesian Cup Championship between the winner of the Intercity Cup and Fiji's Vodafone Cup competition on Saturday, October 10. Following in the footsteps of the World Club Challenge, contested by NRL and Super League clubs, the premiers of PNG and Fiji's National Leagues will now play for a regional title. The match will be held annually in the region, which will promote and improve the respective national competitions and give the local teams something extra to aim for. Six clubs remain in the Intercity Cup, the Lace Next Tigers, Tene Simbu Lions, Hela Wigman, Egmak Rabaul Gurias, Mendy Muruks and Mount Hagen Eagles. The winner will progress to the Melanesian Club Championships. While in Fiji, eight clubs still battle it out to win Fiji's Vodafone Cup. The competition has the potential of providing another pathway for elite local players to showcase their skills and talents. And also enhance a good relationship between the rugby league players and officials in both nations. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. Over 10 NRL, Thursday evening football saw the Dragons secure their position in the NRL Top 8 following their 19-12 win over the Panthers. Tonight, we'll see a crucial clash for both the Rabbitohs and the Bulldogs as they look to maintain their form after coming off victories last weekend. Russell Crowe and James last weekend, the Bunnies put the rest of the competition on notice when they walked over an informed Cowboys team 31-18. Last four rounds last year. A ball inside. Johnston steps away. Walker's there in support. Shut the gate. Walker scores. The Rabbitohs will be missing some of their players to injury, but will be confident to maintain their run for the finals. Chris McQueen with the Bulldogs, on the other hand, are coming off a win last weekend as well when they trampled over the Gold Coast Titans 36 points to 14. Sam Parrott takes it, gets on the outside of his man, flicks it back to Tim Lafay, gives it to Greg Eastwood. Both sides will be up for the challenge in their clash this evening with a key matchup between the fullbacks Greg Inglis and Brett Morris, two contrasting players who are dangerous if given enough room. The match is set to be a thriller. Last night saw the Dragons bounce back from a defeat last weekend with the win over the Penrith Panthers. The Dragons proved too strong and ran away with the match 19 points to 12. Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. That NRL report wraps up True Guy Sports tonight. Stay tuned. We have the weather details coming up next. True Guy Sports. True Guy Sports.
Hello. Yeah, um, just on the recap. Uh, yeah, can can you check the graphics for the recap? Because here it says home ground construction uh, for the constitution part. All right, cool. Taking a look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in southern region, fine although dry, expected in Port Moresby, Daru, Kerama, fine weather expected in Alatau and Popundeta. In Momase, fine although dry, expected in Lay City, mostly fine expected in Wau, Medang, Wewak and Banimo. In the New Guinea Islands, cloudy weather expected in Kaviang, Kokopo and Rabaul, fine weather expected in Lorengau, mostly fine in Kimbe while Booker to look forward to brief showers. And in the islands, all centres dry, although morning fog expected. Forecast for small ships, but first there is a strong wind warning current for all coastal waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island, including Cape Vogel to Finchafen to Vitya Strait, Siasi Islands, Long Islands and all NGI Islands. Looking at waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait, Daru to Kiwai Island, Eastern and Western Milan Bay Islands, seas of 2 to 2.5 metres, waters west of Long Island to Medang, to Bogia, Wewak to Aitape, Banimo and the northern PNG Indonesian border, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 metres, Waters of Finchafen, including Vitya Strait, Siasi Island to Long Island, Manus and its western group of islands, New Island to New Britain and Bougainville, seas of 2.5 metres to 3 metres, and waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel and Finchafen, seas of 1.5 metres to 2.5 metres. And now we take a look at ocean forecasts for PNG areas, coral and Solomon seas. Seas rather rough with southeast winds at 20 to 25 knots. Bismarck Sea seas rough with southeast winds at 25 to 34 knots. And Pacific Ocean Sea slight to moderate with southwest winds at 10 to 20 knots. Now before we go, as always, quickly recapping our main headlines again tonight. Water levels at Yonki Dam drop. Also, low water levels in Madang due to El Nino. And leaders describe PNG's constitution 40 years on. Well, that's how we wrap up Friday's bulletin from the news team. I'm Tokana Hasavi Jr. Thanks for your company. You have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Good night.